What's up, everyone? My name is Matt Ackerson. I'm the founder and CEO of Autogrow.co. As you may already know, I don't know, but you know it now. So in this video, we are going to go over three great examples of landing pages from billion dollar companies, and we're going to see what we can learn from them and what can you take from those learnings about what they're doing right, about what they're what they can do better, what they maybe have done wrong, and apply that to your own landing pages. And perhaps if you're looking to create a new landing page right now, you know, you can take the lessons and immediately apply them. I'm gonna keep this very specific and actionable. Uh, so come along, let's jump right into it. So having a great landing page is like having your own personal salesman, just on staff, on call, available 24 seven, just working all the time to greet and move prospects towards buying automatically. Just imagine kind of like a I don't know, personal shopper. You, you, you say that you have your own store and you know, the person is just standing by the entrance waiting to, to greet prospects. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? And they just, but they don't just say hello and you know, welcome to Walmart or whatever, um, you know, retail store maybe comes to mind with this analogy, but they can actually, they walk them through the whole sales process and they talk to them about what is being offered. They try to anticipate all their common questions. And yeah, it's never going to be as effective as actually having a person to have a conversation with in real time to get all the information that you need in some ways is actually better because they can skim and scan on the landing page. All the information is right there. Um, and it can't be totally personalized, but, uh, you know, that's, that's the benefit to having an effective landing page. And these examples that we're going to go over right now are from billion dollar, uh, very successful companies. Some of them used to be startups up until very recently. Um, but they're a little bit more mature these days because they've been around for a little while. All right. So the first one that we're going to go over is the Airbnb hosting landing page. All right, so here it is. You can see here that the headline at the top, super focused on what people care about and why they are looking to host their Airbnb, their uh, apartment or home on Airbnb in the first place, which is money. All right, so people want to earn money uh, by renting out their space. And notice how they also, they don't say, you know, for each time that you rent it, you can earn up to 50 bucks a night or 70 bucks a night. They actually take the bigger number, which is to extrapolate it on a monthly basis. All right. And, uh, and that's, and that's actually more, more appealing, right? Because when people think of their income typically and expenses, uh, I don't know about you, but I certainly think about it on a monthly basis. So they sort of, uh, they were smart to make that decision to orient it in terms of the copywriting in that particular way. Uh, they're also personalizing it in terms of the location. So, for example, in uh, Cham Champaign, Illinois, in uh, Long Island, New York, you know, wherever the person is visiting the site from, they give the name of the town, uh, and they also take a look at, you know, well, what is what is the typical place going for on a monthly basis, and they calculate and show that number. Uh, in real time to the prospective Airbnb host. Okay. Um, it, notice the imagery too. You know, we obviously we have uh, smiling faces, um, which kind of helps to convey comfort and trust. But along the lines of trust, you know, they also right here, right off the bat, we've got your back. We've got a $1 million property damage protection and other guarantee. Because what's the biggest, you know, fear? And fear, by the way, is one of the top motivating forces for why anyone does anything, right? It's, it's uh, some masters of persuasion that I have studied and that I've read. Uh, they describe it as, uh, if you're thinking about the, the different things in terms of persuasion, it's, it's at the top. Big fear would be number one uh, at the top. Identity would be number two. Little fear would be number three. Aspirational uh, type of selling would be number four on the ladder. So, uh, and, and what's the biggest fear that people have as potential Airbnb hosts? Well, they don't want their stuff damaged. They don't want their apartment damaged. Okay. Um, some years back, I was actually 
uh, an Airbnb host. I was living in Brooklyn, New York, and I just wasn't there all the time. So I said, thousand bucks a month extra income sounds great to me. And so I did it, but you know, I'm speaking from experience. You know, I was motivated by, all right, I don't want anyone to uh, damage my stuff or damage the apartment. Um, so that's, uh, that's definitely speaking to the audience um, and, and their specific need there. Uh, notice also how it, there's, there's not a ton of copy. And this is a success pattern that I've been noticing across a number of different websites over time. And I think that there's something to be said about simplicity and kind of, I don't know, there's like, there's like a sweet spot in terms of the amount of copy and the amount of design elements on a page. I think that the more complex and the more things that you have to review, I think that oftentimes just the lower the conversion rate will be. And I mean, you really need to A-B test this to know for sure. You know, part of it, you could uh, relate to branding as well. Uh, like maybe you don't want your brand to be associated with having like a long, complex, complicated thing. Um, but on the other hand, I mean, look at the site Crazy Egg, for example. Uh, I know for a fact some years ago, uh, Neil Patel and his team, they spent about a quarter million dollars to hire consultants to A-B test uh, the homepage where they ended up adding uh, a video at the top and then a ton of copy and design elements, uh, you know, below the fold. And the result was over a 62% increase in conversion rates in terms of people actually signing up. But if you look at the same homepage, fast forward you know, to today, and it looks very different. It's much, much simpler by comparison. So you can go check that out if you're curious. And it's, uh, it's, it's more kind of like this, all right? So simplicity also uh, can have a positive influence on conversion rates. The trick is to really do your homework, do your research, you know, know what the frequently asked questions are, know what the key objections are, all right? Um, I mean, in this case too, there's definitely a really, uh, you know, easy argument to make for keeping it simple because you're not actually trying to get people to buy something in this case, you know, but you are trying to, you know, get them invested in, in the process of, of listing their apartment, their, their piece of real estate, uh, their home, right? So you're kind of speaking more to fear than you are to actually speaking to uh, the need to pull out your credit card and, and spend some money. All right. So what could they be doing better? Let's go over that now. So in terms of what they could be doing better in terms of the, the page, the copy, the design is maybe it's too much white space. You know, maybe it's, it needs more design elements. And in particular, the one thing I would say to add is a section to talk about in an empathetic clear way, well, what's the problem that people want to solve? You know, actually talk about it in, in a way that um, paces the reader, okay? Pacing and leading. And there have been numerous uh, research studies, A-B tests that have been done that show that when you pace by actually discussing the problem to be solved rather than just jumping in, okay, here's the solution, here's how it works, mm, people may not necessarily understand that you have the solution. Now it's possible that in the case of Airbnb, the name, the, the awareness in the market is so ubiquitous, you know, maybe that overrides the need for that, but you'll never know unless you A-B test. Okay, in the second example, we're going over Shopify. Shopify is today a public company and their stock has really skyrocketed since you know, coronavirus happened. Uh, but all that aside, let's evaluate their top landing page, which is their homepage. So how are they doing? Well, what they're doing right is it's it's clear what they're helping people to do. Okay, you build, build an online business no matter what business you're in. Because probably one of the key objections, since they are a they're providing a mass B2B market uh, product to help entrepreneurs, startups, establish businesses is this right for me? It's like, okay, well, it is because we built it to work for everyone in, in any case um, and for any business. And that's the ob objection that they're addressing right off the bat. 
Um, and it's clear too, okay, you know, there, there's a lot of people know the name Shopify, so they have some, you know, uh, probably pretty deep market and pretty wide market awareness already. Uh, but obviously it's a tool that helps you to uh, build your business, uh, build an online business. All right, so with the words that they're using though, they're, they're much more end result oriented there, All right? They don't, they don't present it kind of in a more commodity type of way. Okay, it's an e-commerce platform that you can build your store on. You know, they just go right for the end result, all right? which is good because people want to buy the end result. They don't want to buy all the features and the process of how you actually get there. Now, a uh, good kind of example here up front, you know, pretty, uh, pretty generic. So people, you know, no matter who is coming here, there's a pretty good chance that like, okay, it's a, uh, it, it's, it's a shop. I'd be setting up a shop and, you know, um, you know, from something as simple and every day is all right, well, getting food delivered. What do you want? Do you want onions, <laughs> celery? Do you want some uh, potatoes or whatever that is? There's also great social proof. Okay, so they have tons of examples. They invite you to explore more examples, which you can click over and check those out. The ubiquitous, highly visible at all times. So I'm scrolling down here, but the navigation is across the top and it stays there, which is great because the start free trial button is always there. However, uh, one of my team members who also checked this out said that on a uh, 15 inch normal size uh, monitor MacBook Pro, and I'll just zoom in to kind of illustrate that the, uh, the start free trial button would actually disappear from the top there. So you can see how that works there. So unfortunately it looks like on mobile um, that the, from you know, our framework, sales funnel physics, the law of visibility is really not being adhered to there. So that's definitely one thing that they could, that could be improved on here. Um, I think also like even being able to click into some of these examples, whether it pulls up a full screenshot or it takes you to the actual store um, might give more clarity. And I, I understand perhaps why they didn't do that. They just want to give you kind of like a like a sampling, perhaps. So maybe from from a conversion point standpoint, um, don't do that. But at the very least, they could still they could still show the even if they're not gonna if they, even if they don't want to take you off the page, which I understand and I agree with from a strategy standpoint. I think that it would add more clarity if they at least showed some sort of a um, you know, like a pop up full screen preview on this page when when you clicked on those but perhaps that's something that they A-B tested. So the best path forward, start an online business, move your business online. Okay, so they're, they're also giving the different kind of journey avenues uh, that you might fit into. They are giving pretty clear benefits, giving you a preview of what the app actually looks like. So great clarity there, more social proof, case study, Looks like a video case study as well. More logos, more social proof. So pretty every on the social proof. The, the images are also, notice how they're not stock photos. In a previous video I said, don't use like super common stock photos because people, mm, it's a turnoff. It, it feels commercial, right? Um, so this, you know, like guide a computer. Okay, you've seen stock photos like that, but you haven't seen this one. They probably either uh, paid for the exclusive rights of this photo, or they um, had someone sit down at a computer and they custom shot it, so they own all the rights to the to the photo in either case. Um, so it helps to convey authenticity, um, and it's it's good for a design element too, because otherwise, if it looks like something too generic and overused in other places, uh, then in that case, people, it's going to turn people off and be like, ah, oh, this is just commercial whatever, they're just trying to get me to pay money rather than focusing on the offer, like, okay, is this offer right for me or not? Another thing that they could have done better that uh, I, I disagree with is, you know, at, at the top here, you know, they have this form, but if you click start a trial, you are, uh, you know, like my instinct as a, as a user was to try to click outside of this. Uh, I didn't even see until just now this uh, this X over here uh, so that I could actually go back. So I think that uh, A-B testing, the ability to easily get out of it because I had to refresh the page and 
therefore I felt actually locked into this. And, and that's actually, you know, that can be a conversion tactic as well. Uh, for example, removing links from pricing pages in the navigation and the footer uh, has often been shown to increase incrementally your overall conversion rates because it focuses people's attention. Okay, do I want to fill out this form or not? So it's very, um, it's, it's likely that this would increase conversions, but you know, you have to make sure that you're looking at the right numbers for it if this is something you're A-B testing because it may increase conversions of people who are on the site the first time, but what about you know, repeat visitors and kind of like across the, the lifetime of people visiting the site? You know, it might actually have a, a net neutral or even net negative impact. So it's so important to, to be aware of you know, what you're measuring when you're, when you're testing these, uh, these different elements. But again, you know, what's, what's the most important things that are working are, are the offer, high visibility for the offer as you move down the page, uh, a lot of social proof, a lot of, you know, clarity without, without the text feeling overwhelming at all. Um, so again, like the first example with Airbnb, light on the text, it's good. It's persuasive. It's, it's clear enough to get you interested. And their offer is free. It's a 14-day free trial with no credit card required. So now we're gonna move over to ZipRecruiter. Let's check out ZipRecruiter and what's working, what's not, what they can do better on their top landing page, which is also like Shopify. Okay, so what is ZipRecruiter doing right and what could they improve on? Well, the headline, right, when you come to the site, not a lot of images, so it captures your attention. You wanna know what it's about. You wanna know some of the details of what it can do for you. And obviously in this case, there are two sides to, to ZipRecruiter. There are businesses and there are job seekers. Now, clearly, it's understood who they are positioning for. They're positioning towards the job seeker. Let's find a job for you, any industry, any location, any experience level. Something about the repetition of any with the period, it, it feels confident, you know, and that's and that's good. It's and it's they're they are very clearly stating. It doesn't matter what type of job you're looking for, we can help. So obviously it's a mass market solution. Uh, another good thing that they've done throughout this page is they use the word you a lot. This is a good copywriting strategy. Uh, and it's just kind of a human strategy too because it, it indicates that you are, um, you're trying to talk directly to the reader, okay? For you, for you, right? Instead of saying we or I, you know, people get, they kind of tune out when you talk too much about yourself, especially if you're trying to make them an offer about something, even if the offer is free or paid or whatever the case, they wanna know, okay, I don't care about you um, unless you can give me some value, right? You know, they're not, they're not on your website to make friends. They're there to understand, okay, what value can you bring to me? How can you help me to solve my problem, all right? So if you take that attitude with writing the copy and in the design, your landing pages are going to be that much more effective as a result, notice how also, uh, you know, they are personalizing the, uh, the box here. So whatever location you're in, they will uh, try to find the correct town or closest town based on your IP address. Now, it's not, it's not perfect, as in my case, but it's, uh, it's personalized enough where I can, I can recognize that, you know, they're, they're trying to make it easier for me to, uh, to start, excuse me, to start searching. So in terms of uh, they also show, you know, what, what, what searches are popular. Um, what, I, what I really like and what I think is really strong about this page and the design of the page too is they, they focus hard on the end results and showing you, you know, what it is you're getting and why you should work with them. So clearly they're, they're showing you here. And notice how too, like there's no, there's no background image. Okay, there's no background image. Again, kind of, focus on you know the, the minimum number of elements and the minimum amount of effective copy that you need to make the sale in this case the sale is to uh, create a profile and they're just asking for you know for for, for your name uh, and your email address to to get started you're gonna have to fill out more information of course but they're just looking for the most basic info that they can um, get from you to get you started on that on that journey and they're showing you, okay, when you sign up, you're gonna get notifications like this. 
And again, very end result focused. So you got your phone in front of you. Imagine, this is kind of like what they're trying to say, but instead of saying it, they're showing it, which is, and they're doing it visually, which is super persuasive and effective. Um, you know, Elaine from at and is interested in you and Elaine is sending you a message. Hey, I want to hire you for this position. Let's chat. You know, that's exactly what someone who wants ZipRecruiter or is considering ZipRecruiter for their job search wants. They want job offers, especially friendly ones from, from someone like Elaine who seems super nice. I would love to chat. Do you want to work for a company that uh, comes off that way as super friendly? Um, again, you know, uh, what's, what's the experience going to be like? They're not showing you even the actual interface, but they're giving you, they're giving you a sense of it. And you can kind of like fill in the blanks um, uh, in your own mind. Instant job alerts will let you know immediately when a new job match comes available. And some, some top name companies. There, so it's kind of, it's, it's not even saying that these companies endorse ZipRecruiter. Maybe they do. But it's implied social proof because it's it's showing, okay, these companies certainly use ZipRecruiter or have their jobs listed on ZipRecruiter. And a lot of people want to work at top name companies where they recognize the brand because, hey, they, those companies are the most successful and they have the money to invest in and give a great salary and perhaps benefits too. Number one rated job search app. Okay, so this was the one section that I felt could be strengthened in some way because it's, you know, according to who, uh, according to who, you know, wh where is this, is this five stars? Is it, it's kind of like fake, right? You know, did they just put it there? And, 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 you know, how many people have, okay, so actually I'm seeing it now, uh, according to the iOS app store, Google, okay, December 2019. Now, I think what would be better is, you know, especially with the five-star rating, is to show, okay, how many people gave a five-star rating? Or even, even if the average is, I don't know, 4.5, like that actually makes it feel more trustworthy. And um, I wrote a detailed article about social proof. Uh, you can Google for auto grow social proof and it, it should show up along with a kind of a fun video that I made to go with it. Um, different from, from these videos, kind of animated and such. But anyway, uh, to be able to say, you know, oh, according to, you know, five, uh, based on 550 most, well, 551 most recent ratings, you know, we scored a 4.6, right? Uh, it's not a perfect five-star score, but these days, you know, consumers are more and more savvy rather than, you know, the opposite, okay? We're more and more savvy and we're more skeptical. So if you give a concrete number and you give the actual rating, it's actually going to help you. Rather than in the research in that article that I just mentioned about social proof and how to do it the right way is uh, this, this university, I think it's University of uh, North, Northwestern University, a professor conducted a study where he looked at the sales rates of uh, products on Amazon and found that you know the ones with you know just perfect scores actually didn't sell as well as those that were have have a product score average of four point two to like four point seven, because um, because you know customers they they want to know like that okay is it, is it is it legit you know is it is it legit, and so they they, and they also might want to, um, it, basically what it would communicate in this in this case is that. You know, real people are reviewing it, and this is a real number because, you know, there's always going to be at least one person out of a hundred, even if you have the most amazing app or whatever in the case in the in the whole world, who might give it a one star, two star, three star, four star. So a five out of five, um, you know, would not uh, be the average probably for pretty much anyone. So they could they could do a better job there. Uh, great social proof here. So uh, they got videos. Uh, have sort of uh, written testimonial case studies here, call to action at the bottom, and a number of links. You know, I, I think that they might be doing this for SEO purposes. So a better approach, though, might be to have this be hidden by default under some kind of an HTML div, and then people would click to expand it to browse it. Because um, I don't really, I don't know 
but it'd be, it'd be, if I was consulting with them with a zip recruiter, I'd say, you know, you may want to consider, you know, hiding this and people do have people click on it by default, because again, link links, a lot of links like this, they could easily be bleeding conversions, taking people in different directions rather than the one that you want them to go in. Okay. Start creating your profile. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. And we went over three examples of landing pages from big billion dollar companies, very successful businesses. And we looked at some of the ways that they were successful and doing the right things and some ways they could optimize and perhaps weren't making their landing pages work as effectively as they could. Uh, now, I hope that you will take action from this video and actually apply what it is that you got from this video. And I'd also love it, love to hear from you. If you like this video, please hit the like button as well as leave a comment, whether you're watching this on autogrow.co's blog or you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment, let me know what was the number one observation, lesson, takeaway, right, wrong thing that you got from this video, because uh, I'd love to hear from you. And in addition, if you are interested in creating or optimizing your own landing pages, or even you want to build an entire sales funnel, uh, a website, ads, check out autogrow.co, because with Autogrow, that's this company right here, autogrow.co, you can delegate all of your digital marketing tasks without the headaches of hiring, without the headaches of hiring. So ZipRecruiter, yeah, they help you to find candidates, for example, um, like a lot of other sites do, but uh, there's marketplaces out there as well. But if you're a busy business owner, if you're a, a marketing professional, if you're an agency, it is a headache. You know it, I know it. It's a headache to find really good people that will stay, that you're gonna invest in both money and time. Um, so why not just not do that? Instead, take the easier, faster route, um, which is to sign up for Autogrow. Because uh, Autogrow is like project management software, but with, a, uh, but with proven pros already inside, part of the software already inside, copywriters, designers, developers, strategists, and more. And we're just there ready and waiting to get your digital marketing tasks done, to get your digital marketing assets built and created for you, uh, custom design, custom copywriting, anything that you really need, uh, support with app management. And it's uh, starting at just $7 for seven days. For We have a special going on right now. It's a $7 for seven day trial. So super affordable. And there's no long-term contracts. Uh, our base package, monthly package, is uh, just $19 per day or $5.99 per month, all right? And it's an amazing product and we are just building it out, making it better and better and faster every single day. So uh, I hope you check it out uh, because it's, it's really cool and there's no one else out there that I know of that's really solving this problem the way that, that we are. So delegate all of your digital marketing tasks without the headaches of hiring. Go to autogrow.co to learn more about that. All right. And as always, uh, until next time, keep converting and stay focused. I'll talk to you soon.